A to B, A to C, A to D, do as I say, not as I do type of a thing. Hello, my name is Michael Ward. Uh, I'm getting interviewed today and it's gonna be fun. Who I am and where I'm from, um, my name is Michael Ward, or Mike Ward. I am originally from a farm town uh, in central Alberta, Canada, and that is me. This is kind of like a, I don't remember exactly when, like, like a lot of kids, I used to say, like everybody, when they're growing up, everybody had a calligraphy set, but I've learned that not everybody had a calligraphy set when they were growing up. I used to do like really casual, like old English and, and Gothic lettering and whatnot when I was quite young, just like in junior high school or grade seven, things like that. Um, but like getting really into, into penmanship and calligraphy probably started around 2000 and, 12, I would say it's, I don't have a specific date because I, I got into calligraphy through my obsession with fountain pens. Um, I like contraptions and I was collecting and restoring fountain pens and that led me to wanting to improve my handwriting. So I did what everybody does and I Googled, how do you improve your handwriting? And I stumbled across uh, the IAPWITH website. I didn't read that it was an association and that you could join or anything. I just found the book section and I found the Palmer Method book. And I just went through it and late at night I would just practice because I was writing correspondence to a lot of friends and stuff with my pens. And I practiced and it became something that I enjoyed. So I would attend pen shows and that's like when I would meet penmen like Michael Saul and things like that. And then, then I got like sort of deeper than from Palmer Method, I discovered Spencer in ornamental penmanship. And then I kind of call that my, my rabbit hole or that's the slippery slope that I fell into and have been happily falling down <laughs> ever since. Calligraphy to me, I mean, by definition, uh, in, in my brain anyways, and calligraphy is beautiful writing. So, yeah, that's just what any writing that is beautiful, and beautiful means different things to different people, but beautiful writing is calligraphy. So, like, people always ask, uh, like, is penmanship calligraphy, or are you a calligrapher, or are you a penman? I am both, sometimes. When I'm just doing simple writing, to me, it's, I wouldn't really consider it beautiful. It's just, I mean, maybe it's beautiful to me, but if somebody else were to look at it, I mean, it's, it's writing. So like not all penmanship is calligraphy, but obviously to me, a lot of it is like when I'm doing ornamental penmanship, that's designed to be beautiful. So that by definition is calligraphy. Um, calligraphy, because writing doesn't have to be done smooth and quick, like there's calligraphic styles that are slow. So calligraphy, some is penmanship, but some is not penmanship. So some penmanship is calligraphy, some is not. Some calligraphy is penmanship and some is not. It's not like black or white, really. To me, it, it kind of depends on the the type of calligrapher or the type of penman. Like if you, if you take a calligrapher who does um, old English or foundational script or Roman capitals or something like that, they are essentially drawing the letters or when we're doing those styles, we're drawing the letters. So to me, that is calligraphy because they're creating beautiful writing, but penmanship is, it's, it's writing, but it, it, it is more so movement and it's tough to get into those definitions because I don't like things to be like black or white. I don't like when things are like, this is this. Uh, but personally, I wouldn't consider or I don't consider like drawn or, or not even slow, but like 
drawn and fixed and touched up letters, to me that's not handwriting. Handwriting is like you're writing a letter to somebody and you write. Regardless of the speed that you do that, you are doing like cursive and you're doing penmanship and you are handwriting. So sort of cursive, um, cursive script and handwriting kind of, or that's what handwriting is to me. Um, so with, I guess, the difference between calligrapher and penman, uh, like a calligrapher who does, though like foundational and the European scripts and whatnot, to me, I wouldn't consider them a penman. Be to me, I would consider them a calligrapher. If they also do penmanship, then when they're doing penmanship, uh, like when they're doing handwriting, whether it be slow, fast, Spencerian, just Palmer myth, any, any script, then they are a penman. So it's kind of, they are, they can be both at different times. Um, I consider myself a penman um, because I extensively study penmanship. Because my definition of, of calligraphy is beautiful writing, when I do ornamental penmanship, I, can, I think it's beautiful. And I think when other people do it, it's beautiful. So when people say or call me a calligrapher, to me, that's accurate. I am also a calligrapher because I create beautiful art, beautiful writing. And I do broad pen and, and other styles as well. I just don't post them and share them as much as my, as much as my ornamental penmanship. Um, so I consider myself a calligrapher. I know some, some penmen do not. Some penmen don't like being called calligrapher. And that's just because their definition of calligraphy, it means something else to them. And this, I don't, it's not right or wrong. It's just to me, I am, I am both. I have, <laughs> this is where as a teacher, do as I say, not as I do type of a thing. Um, and this is why I also don't know when I started penmanship because it was very, very slow. Like for those who know about tools, like we use iron gall ink and we use nibs that are disposable. When I started doing penmanship, I used one Nico G for a year, for a whole year. I didn't know that they wore out. I didn't know iron gall ink was bad or like, was rough on nibs and whatnot. I went to, it was when I first met Michael Saul and I got a Nico G and I got a holder and I was writing with it and I didn't know anything. And a year later, I went back to him at the LA Pen Show again and said, I asked if he had more of more nibs. Like, do you have more of those Nico G nibs? The one I got from you last year is getting a little scratchy. It's getting a little scratchy after a year of, I only had iron gall ink. So after a year of using iron gall ink, obviously it was extremely scratchy. Um, so it's so all that to say, I got started very like, there wasn't like a specific time. I practiced very, not like all the time. I wasn't super like, go, go, go practice. Uh, when I did it, I did a lot of it. And that's sort of the thing that still, uh, that is still the way I practice today. I, I like and I try to practice daily. It's not always like a real practice session. Um, I, I take practice into, or I like thinking of uh, uh, two different kinds of practice in, in my own mind. Uh, the one is when I'm studying um, and some of, I consider studying also practice, like I spend a I spend a way more time studying for, like studying and looking. I, go, I look through scrapbooks basically every night before I go to bed, just cause, cause I think it's fascinating. Um, so studying and then practicing and replicating and the repetition and the drills. Um, I, none of that stuff is, I don't like post it cause it's, I mean, it's, it's not exciting. It's not the stuff that I do in videos, but Instagram and YouTube, obviously I'm on those a lot. So when I'm doing things, if I just did my study and practice, which is, I love to do it, but if I just did it, I know in my own personality, I would get not bored, but I would, I like doing different things, which is why I carve wood and do this and do, I do other things. And if it was just practice, I would be much better than I am today, way better than I am now, but I probably would have quit by now. I probably would have like, if I don't enjoy it, and this is all life in general, if I don't enjoy it, I'm not gonna do it. If I don't like a job, I will 
I will quit that job, even though I gotta figure out how I'm gonna pay rent or whatever after that. But that's kind of something that's super important to me. If I don't enjoy it, I'm not gonna do it. So I enjoy the study, but it's, it can be, if you've done a lot of study, it can be monotonous and repeti repetitious and whatnot, or sorry, repetitive. So I have my second style of practice, which I call playtime. And this is like my Sig Sling and Sunday challenges, my YouTube lives. They are, I'm way less critical of my work. My eye sees everything that it wants to do, but I don't take that critique as like, oh, like that's not good. It's more so just to play. Uh, Cause what drew me to ornamental penmanship and whatnot was the signatures, all the crazy stuff and the creativity they, they the penman back in the day managed to put into it. Um, so the playtime is super, super, super important to me. So it's the balance of those two. Do I practice for a specific amount of time every day? No. Should I? Yeah, probably. Um, there are times where I will, I will write for hours and hours and hours a day for like weeks, like nonstop and it's just crazy for like a month or sometimes just a week or it, it changes. I live a very artist lifestyle. So also sometimes like there will be like two month stretches where I'm doing a dance job or I'm touring, doing something else with some company, regardless of what it is, or I'm feeling obsessed with origami for a couple months. And I just basically all in do that. So I don't end up writing as much. And it's kind of always been that way for my study. It's never been like a 15 minutes every day type of a thing. I would love to, and it would like 30 minutes a day would be like my ideal, like minimum. Um, but I, I rarely practice for just 30 minutes. If I sit down to practice, it's a long game. Like we're there for, it's going to be at least an hour or two, pretty much. If you've ever taken a class or watched a YouTube thing, this question, I keep going. I will go for hours and I don't run out of energy. So as long as there's still fuel, which with ornamental penmanship, I'm never going to reach the level that I want to with it. I'm never going to be as good as I want to. I don't imagine because when you get to the highest level, you can make things, you, then you get creative. And then, so it's, it's like art. You never get to, you never, as a painter, like a painter doesn't just become the perfect painter. They then, then they put more like emotion into the piece or that type of stuff. So there is no destination. So I can practice my entire life and it's just, it's always amazing and fun. Um, yeah, I recommend, the biggest thing with practice, I'll say, just to, to wrap up this incredibly long, long answer, sorry. Um, when I practice to practice, it is very focused. Like 15 or 30 minutes of a practice session um, is of studied and focused practice. Like 50, 10 minutes, five minutes of, of focused, good practice outweighs and is better in my opinion than hours of playtime in growth. For me, the hours of playtime are what I enjoy and I balance it off with the studied focused practice. If you just do playtime and that's what you want to do, awesome. But you can't just do playtime and expect to like, to get better faster, I guess. Like there's nothing wrong with not being amazing. Like I'm gonna, you're allowed to be not the best at your hobbies. You're allowed to just enjoy it because you enjoy it and whatnot. And if you want to do that, playtime. If you want to be really, really, really good, you a little more of the scales are on this side where you're just doing focused practice. I like a balance of the two personally. Um, and that's a personal choice for sort of every penman. I mean, yeah, there's always challenges. Ornamental penmanship is, I mean, it's the hardest thing in the like, in my opinion, in the like the calligraphic penmanship world, ornamental penmanship, like the letter forms and the flourishing that goes along with the letter forms is the hardest thing. Like right up there, the other one is like Roman capitals, which is what I want to get better at. I'm a glutton for punishment. I want to do the two hardest things ever, but that's a different kind of hard. It's because of the precision and, and, and recognizing like the, 
the like perfection of, 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 of the forms and whatnot. But so when you want to do the hardest thing, there are obviously challenges along the way. Um, yeah. Like I, I, I try to think of one specifically. Well, I could just say the capital D. If you've ever watched one of my videos, you know that I hate that letter because it struck. I struggle with it for some whatever reason. I don't know why I've worked on it extensively. And sometimes they're beautiful and they're just they're not as consistent as many of my other letters. Now, another challenge was ascender strokes are something that um, you like I can do them like using uh, a, a hinge movement, no problem. But if I want to do them using proper push pulls with not rotating my paper every time I have to do a dis or an ascender, they are struggling. Or they, I, when I started penmanship, I did pages and I mean, still do because ascenders I find very difficult. Some people don't, and I envy those people because it's just one thing that something about my muscles and my arms just don't want to do them. So it's, I've had to fight to get through those. But that's also kind of fun because when you have a challenge, you get to find ways of succumbing that challenge, which is cool. It is hard, but the cool thing about ornamental penmanship um, to me, or not the cool thing, one of the cool things, um, when you start ornamental penmanship, the learning curve is very high. But in a very sh like you, it's it's tough and you start it and you're like, this is impossible. But relatively quickly, you get to a point where it's not where you want to be and it's not perfect. I mean, none of us are perfect. Nobody on the planet is, is perfect, which is awesome. Um, but you'll get to a point where like relatively quickly where it feels good. It's expressive. Not perfect, but it looks and feels good. And to somebody who's not like a practicing ornamental penman, if I wrote something when I was like brand new, like when I, the stuff that I used to post on Instagram years ago, when Instagram was brand new, back then I was proud of that stuff and I shared it and I was like, check this out, look what I made. And other people, oh, that's great, cool. When I look at it now, holy moly. So it's like, but I didn't have the eye that I have now. And that's the cool thing. Like what I do tomorrow is different than what I do today. If I'm proud of what I do today, I'm not not proud of what I did back then because that was my journey. In the very beginning, it's hard. But when you're just diving into it relatively quickly, once you understand the fundamentals, because everything breaks down into the ovals, the undercurves, the overcurves. Once you understand those, whether you're doing it rapidly with movement or slowly, whether you're just drawing the forms, that's also, I did slow calligraphy for years and still do for, I don't only do rapid ornamental penmanship. Um, I did slow, uh, slow ornamental penmanship for years before I decided to go fast or decided to dive into movement writing. So um, all that to kind of say like, there are things a beginner can do. And then as they do those things really quickly, they will get to a point that they can be proud of their work. And then that work can keep growing. So it's easy to get decent, but it's really, really hard to get perfect. And that's what I like. It's like throwing a Frisbee. Like it, you have to be really good to do like the Frisbee sports and get like super accuracy. But anybody can go to the beach and have fun throwing a Frisbee. It's not hard to throw a Frisbee. Ornamental penmanship is that. It's not. Once you get, it's, it's a little hard. It's like hard in the beginning, but relatively quickly you get used to it and then you can just do it. And then it's really hard to get here, but it's easy to get like here from, from the beginning. So it is beginner friendly. So long as the beginner can relax and cannot be overly critical of themselves. They have to just enjoy it as they're going and understand that They've only been doing this for a short amount of time. And if they don't put the pressure on themselves, then yeah, it's 100% beginner friendly. If you put pressure on yourself, then you're going to want to quit the day you start because it's, it's a challenge the day you start. But yeah, I would say yes, beginner friendly, <laughs> longest answers ever. Sorry. <laughs> My ultimate goal in studying calligraphy is to have fun. 
I, en I enjoy it regardless of whether I hit or miss forms and designs and stuff. Um, it's fun. I do it because I absolutely love doing it. Uh, when it comes to like, where is my destination? My ultimate goal, so when I got into ornamental penmanship, doing it slow and designing, I like designing signatures and whatnot. I like designing like the things I do on leather blotters and stuff like that. I can't do those things with movement and with proper ornamental penmanship. I can't write the things that I design. So I design them super slow and I perfect them and whatnot because that's the, my signatures look like my work. That's my own style, I would say. It's unique to me when you see one of my pieces, people, most people, if they know my work, they can recognize it as, oh, Mike designed that. Then the other side of things, I also want to be able to achieve the quality that the old masters had and what we have in the scrapbooks and whatnot. I want to be able to do that quality of work. The ultimate goal is the marriage of those two things where I can, and I'm, some days we get close, but I don't, it may never not be a full convergence because some of the design, they're just too perfect and too like, like even Zayner and whatnot back in the day, they're like, in, like, like engrossed in super twisted things. They can't, they couldn't write those. They, those were designed things and they would have them engraved and perfected because they were their ideas. So the ultimate goal would be my style that I design executed with rapid movement, hairline and ornamental penmanship. So sort of a marriage of those two things. How do they find me? Uh, YouTube.com slash MRMG Ward. That's my YouTube channel. Um, every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Pacific time, I go live. Um, and sometimes I'm live for two hours. Sometimes I'm live for, I think the longest has been six and something, six and some change, uh, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, I've, what have we done now? We've done 87 weeks of, of late night lives. Uh, we're currently in a series of, I say we, because I don't feel like it's just me. I started them because we were in the pandemic and I, I usually practice late at night. That's when I sit down and write and I would just turn my phone on and be like, hey, Instagram, hang out with me because I'm lonely. Basically, I'm just alone. I haven't seen a person in a while. And then that moved to YouTube and whatnot. But right now, like we're combining the entire alphabet. So like A to B, A to C, A to D. And the next week, B to A, B to B, B to C, the next week, C to A. And so we'll go through every single and trying to find creative options and creative ideas, my style type of things, connections that aren't in the old scrapbooks. Um, but yeah, sorry, that youtube.com slash MRMG Ward. That's how you find me. Instagram is at MRMG Ward. Everything is MRMG Ward. It's always, it, everything is the same thing. So my favorite, because like I said, I do all of this because it's fun and I love Totoro. So <laughs> Violet 2 is my winner because the penmanship's beautiful and Totoro's holding a quill. So Totoro, who I love, and calligraphy or penmanship, quill that I love together makes me very happy. CPG, CB guy. <laughs>